Hey everyone, welcome to Moving Math. We do vlogs, travel, and some camera stuff. And this is Camera Wars, the show where we give you the latest camera news and let you know just how the battle is heating up. First up, it looks like Canon's technology may be getting an upgrade. According to Canon rumors, Canon has landed a $386 million contract from the Japanese government. Now they aren't alone in this contract. They will be partnering with Tokyo Electron and Screen Semiconductor Solutions, or S for short. The grant and partnership is to help bolster Japanese chip technology. The goal is to create a two nano or smaller process for chips by the mid 2020s. Now this all sounds pretty exciting and makes me wonder will any of this extra R&D make its presence known in the future cameras? We will just have to see. But speaking of Canon's R&D, patents of an RF 12 2.8 and a 14 2.8 have been uncovered by Canon News. These primes sound extremely intriguing to me. The 12 will be great for landscape and real estate and the 14 may be interesting for vlogging. Assuming the Zazu look is what you're going for, which I absolutely am. But Canon isn't the only one of thinking going wide. If Sony Alpha rumors are to be believed, which they rarely are, then the Sony 14mm f1.8 might be one of the lenses soon to be announced. Now previously it was rumored to be a 16 1.8, but apparently 16 wasn't wide enough. That's what she said. Now personally I am very intrigued by this lens, but it is coming from Sony Astrology rumors, so we will have to wait and see if this is actually a thing. But speaking of a thing, the Sigma FPL is a thing, which begs the question, why? Now I am a big fan of Sigma and am currently shooting on a Sigma lens right now, but very little about this camera appeals to me. Now this camera does pack a 61 megapixel sensor, the same great sensor found in the Sony a7R 4 but the problem is, in pretty much every case, the Sony a7R 4 used it better. And if you add the extra EVF, which you will want to do because this thing doesn't even have a tilt screen, it will bring it to $3,000, which is the current going price of the Sony a7R 4 Now maybe I'm being too harsh on this camera and I haven't actually used it, I just see reviews on YouTube and then watch Gerald Undone to form all my opinions. But from my point of view, it looks like the novelty of being the smallest full frame camera may be all that's going for it. But I may be wrong and you see something special in it and if that's the case, drop in the comment section below and let me know. And finally, the high resolution version of the Canon R5 has been rumored for a while now and most rumored specs has the sensor coming in in the 80 to 90 megapixel range. And I personally believe that the rumors of the R1 being 84 megapixels was actually people confusing the R1 with the high resolution R5. But if Canon rumors are to be believed, which most of the time they are, then the Canon R5S will have a sensor north of 100 megapixels. Now Canon rumors ranks this as a CR2, so it's not fact, but it also is not wild speculation. So apparently this is coming from a very reliable source. Now they say this camera will not just be a high resolution sensor in an R5 body, but created for landscape and studio photographers. So if that means the actual ergonomics of the body will change, it is hard to say, but it may be leaning in that direction. But speaking of leaning in that direction, if you are leaning towards pressing that like button, that would be greatly appreciated. See what you did there? That is the current state of the camera wars. And if you like all things cameras with a dash of vlogs and travel, consider subscribing. And until next time, peace.